Well, hello, flatties and globe defenders. This is Critical Think from Down Under. One of the most favourite things that flatties love to say is that they cannot feel the earth rotate, therefore it does not rotate. I mean, that's pretty silly. There's a lot of things we cannot feel or see or anything like. For example, there's air all around us. But can we see it? No, we cannot see it. Does that mean it's not there? No, it does not mean that at all. And even a flat earther wouldn't say that there's no air around us. And what about the uh, atmospheric pressure? There's an atmospheric pressure or at sea level of 14.7 psi. So every part of your body is subjected to 14.7 psi. That's 14.7 pounds every square inch. Can you feel it? No, you cannot, but it's there. It's easily measured. A barometer measures it. Everybody knows it's there, but you cannot feel it. It's the same with the rotation. It, rotation can be measured. You just can't feel it because it's so small and our bodies are so used to it. It's the same with gravity. We are being pulled to the ground, but we don't actually feel that because it's there all the time. We're used to it. Our bodies are totally conditioned to it. Anyway, one of my most favourite ways to test that the Earth is indeed rotating, is to measure weight change versus latitude. It's a relatively easy test to do, and it yields uh, amazing and astounding results, because the results match exactly what you would expect if the Earth was a sphere and if it was rotating. And it doesn't match at all to any concept of flat Earth, whatever that may be. So I'm going to uh, revisit this experiment. I've done it once before. I've analysed results extensively. And I've found in the past that there is a 98% chance that the data I've gathered is congruent with a rotating oblate spheroid. However, the data is completely incongruent with a 0% match to a flat Earth. So we're going to revisit this again. So I have here a high precision scale, it's a Digitech model QM7264 and uh, it's a little bit more stable and accurate than those other cheap ones you get from Amazon. Now this one I've been using it for a little while, um, just seeing how stable it is and how it's affected by temperature etc. And I'm, I'm working out a standard protocol to use it. I'm going to calibrate it once here in Brisbane. And then I'm going to take it to Melbourne. And I'm going to take it to Phuket and to other parts of Thailand and take various measurements up and down uh, at different latitudes. Now, the good thing about this scale is it's like I said it's much more accurate than the other one and it's a little bit more professional you can see you put a cage it has a cage around the scales with a lid so that it's not affected by air currents and I have been testing this and there it is indeed a lot more stable the official accuracy of, of the device is actually uh, up to 0.1 of a gram out so I'm testing it to see how it performs over time and it, it's it can verify up to about 0.03 of a gram so I'm trying to have a, get a standard protocol like I'm going to turn it on for five minutes and then do my then do my way and that will give it a chance to warm up and this cover here will, will make sure that there's no air currents that will affect the reading. So I'm just going to uh, just place a 500 gram weight on there. <coughs> so I have previously calibrated it and you can see it's settled down to 499.99 in this case. So it could be 98. It sometimes gets a little bit different, but I'm going to go through the calibration process again. Just I'm only going to be doing this once at this latitude, and I'm going to leave that calibration in place 
uh, while I take the scales uh, at different latitudes. Now, I can't change it, otherwise the experiment of weight change versus latitude won't actually be valid. So I'm going traveling. Um, I may recalibrate it again just before I go, just so that we can eliminate the time factor uh, in terms of it may drift out of calibration over time. But for, from my testing over the last few weeks, that doesn't seem to be the case. Now I'll illustrate the uh, calibration process now. So we wait till that says load, 500 grams. Put the 500 grams on. I'll just leave the lid there for the moment. Because it does it very quickly, I don't have a chance to put the lid on. But if uh, it doesn't move from 500. So I'll just check that. And it's gone back to zero. <coughs> and it's now 500.3.03. So it can be out by uh, up to, it's gone down 500.02. It can be out by 0.02. I found that the readings vary by that much. The other set of scales, it was a lot more. So given that the accuracy that we want to be able to detect weight change versus latitude, then this is accurate enough. Now, as you can see, uh, with 500.02, before I actually calibrated, it was showing 500. And I did calibrate it um, a few days ago. So <clears throat> depending on... Uh, various factors, it can be out by 0.02 or, or 0.03. Okay, so, if I uh, see, see the little bits of airflow can alter the, the reading, so I can change, change it by, see look at this, I can make the air, make the reading different, so a little bit of breeze, that's why you have this that's why you have this lid and this cage, so that airflow won't affect the reading. And now it's gone 500.01. So, that's that. See, make sure check that it goes back to zero. And we'll put a few more weights on it. 700, 800. 900, 950. So whether it's 0.03 or 0.02 out, the most important factor that will come into this is the drift over time. And uh, if that drift over time is 0.02, 0.03 as well, then uh, we're still going to be able to get a valid result Okay. Return to zero. So that's it for the introduction to the scales. Well, here I am at uh, Harvey Bay. It's uh, about 200 kilometers away from where I live and I'm going to take another reading on the scales I zero the scales and it's a fair bit of a breeze blowing so you can tell when I take the lid off the breeze goes through there it needs the needs to wait for the breeze to settle down and certainly the breeze does affect it so we'll start putting some weights on. It's about 950 grams. We'll put the lid on and let it settle down.
looks like 949.92 Just make sure it returns to zero, the breeze, it's a bit tricky. So I'll try that again. So that's a consistent reading. So it weighs less, which is an expected result. And we've turned to zero. 949.92. Well, here we are back home after about a 500 odd kilometre round trip to Harvey Bay. And we'll weigh again. And we'll see what the difference is. So that's 950.07, which is a little bit higher than what I've been getting. But we'll see how that, it's 950.06 now, we'll see how that holds over time. So I dusted off my spreadsheet that I've used in uh, previous videos to work out what the gravitational effect would be on a particular weight at a particular latitude and height. So I've put those, plugged those numbers into my spreadsheet. I described the spreadsheet in full in another video and I'll place a link in the description. So the highlighted green here area here shows that if I was to take a weight of 950.06 at the 17 meter and 27.24 latitude then at a 3 meter height at 25.28 the um, weight should be uh, 949.93 which is pretty damn close to what we measured at 949.92. So just these two measurements, the globe's looking pretty good, and the flat Earth, how are you going to explain that in terms of density? It's the same mass, just the only difference is, and the independent variable here is a latitude. So I've wiggled this independent variable, Anthony, by traveling to a different latitude and that is how you can change your independent variable you don't have to actually personally bring the latitude to you so yes as i said i'll be traveling to a couple of other places and we'll see how that works out 
goes on about the difference in uh, the weight of things at the equator compared to other places in the earth. Have you actually gone and measured it? Have you ever done it? We understand that in the model, based on the spin and centrifugals, <coughs> <coughs> centripetal, centripetal, whatever forces, that that's the result that you can calculate based on your model. But can, has anyone, has anyone actually gone and measured this so-called difference? Has anyone actually measured that a kilogram weighed in the, you know, somewhere up north is any different to a kilogram weighed on the equator? Has anyone actually gone and done that? No, they have not. A kilogram is a kilogram wherever you are on the earth. 